Okay, I was having technical issues earlier. So hopefully everything looks and sounds okay. If it doesn't, well, what you get is what you get at this point. So hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie for those who don't know me, reviewing Low Island, Australia, season six, episode 17. Before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment down below. So the episode picks up with Mercedes and M still making out since Thursday. And this is the talk of the villa, mainly Sophie. Everyone talk now. Um, um, so like, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> okay, Mercedes. <laughs> really, guys? You're gonna rub it in. Oh, here we go. Oh, Did you good. see that or what? What? Oh, fuck. Mercedes and them. They just oh. had a kiss. Sorry, I thought you saw it. Hi. If I went and hooked up with Hannah or Chrissy right now, I would be labeled a fuck boy. I'd be labeled toxic. If you want to do it, go do it. The jig is up when it comes to Taylor anyways. The mask is completely off. Go do whatever the hell it is you want to do. He literally has a conversation with Chrissy and Hannah later in the night in the kitchen and tells both of them, well, I should have just been kissing y'all. That's obviously what you wanted to do. And that's a theme when it comes to Taylor, yeah? Taylor has these desires inside that he suppresses so he can continue to look like the good guy. It's not because he's convicted not to do those things. He just wants to keep up the facade. Because time after time, he has said, I actually like this girl. I actually want her to pursue me because if I do it, I will look bad. He didn't say that part, that part was silent. He wants to do all these things, but he doesn't wanna look like a certain kind of guy. He wanted to go for Hannah, but oh, you know, typically on the outside, I don't go for my mate's friend. I don't. As soon as Nico turned his eye to somebody else, he was like, oh, well, I can pursue you now guilt-free. We know you wanna do these things, just stop pretending. Stop pretending. Goodness sakes, he ends up having a conversation with um, M, and he's trying to figure out how she was able to shut off her feelings so quickly. If there's one thing about M, she's been pretty consistent in saying, this is all fun for me. I'm here for bands, I'm here for vibes. I do think that Taylor caught her off guard. I don't think she intended on being as attached to him as she, as she was. But even with that, her issue wasn't, mm. She had more of an issue with him not being transparent with her than with him going and talking to other people and exploring his options. She just wanted to be in the loop, okay? I'm sure it pinged her heart a little bit like, oh damn, why are you talking to my man? But she understands we're on Love Island. You do what you gotta do. She's been consistent when it comes to that. When they were together, he wanted her to be jealous. She wasn't jealous. That pissed him off. Now they're not together. He wants her to be apologetic. She's not apologetic and that pisses him off. Then he goes into the beach hut. Guys, I kid you not. He's like, I feel like I'm being gaslit. <sighs> I am a little bit like disappointed. Always said I want to be respectful to you this whole time. I don't know about you, but like my feelings don't just turn off like that. Mm. It's not like it came out of nowhere. Like, not like I literally hadn't had a single conversation with him and then just like started making out with him as soon as we were done. It's kind of like you just are kind of like blase as it's sort of been. Like, okay. who cares really? So I'm like a bit of a bit of a gaslighting comment, if I'm honest. I feel like I'm being gaslit. Truly. Because I'm here like, he really thinks he's doing his big one here. He thinks he's the best thing since sliced bread in this villa. And I will be the first to admit, I was one of the person, one of the people who was drinking the Kool-Aid at the beginning. I was. But that last week that we experienced, I was like, mm -mm, something about Taylor. Something about Taylor ain't it. Something about Taylor. Even from the Alicia time, actually, let me give myself some credit. Even from Alicia, he said to M, the ball is in your court. That's when the slyness started to really show itself where it's like, well, if you like her, why don't you just make it known? Why do you want the girls to always talk to you to make it seem like you're not doing anything? They just happen to be talking to you. Oh my gosh, oh, poor helpless Taylor. He said that he was disappointed in her because the way she's going about things is disrespectful. And at least he had the courtesy of being respectful. You were showering with Hannah just the other day. You were doing all kinds of rubbing and touching and, 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 and hugging and back 
cracking and all kinds of stuff with Chrissy. At least with Mercedes, y'all had already ended things. She can do what she wants to do. I'm so glad M is, is done with Taylor. I'm so glad. She said in her beach chat, I feel like I'm being lectured by my dad. And truly she is. At every corner, he has some kind of lecture to give her about her behavior. That is exhausting. You claim to be mature and ready for a relationship and stuff. That is not, mm -mm. At least that's not a relationship I would wanna be in. Maybe somebody likes that. I don't like it. M don't like it. And I don't like that for her. Moving on. Chrissy is now upset because she's having a hard time in the villa. She has a conversation with Kayla and they decide to talk to Mercedes to basically say, don't you think something is fishy with this whole situation? I can never know more. People just want to do it all the Oh. All of a sudden, you are Mr. Popular, aren't you? They could have been speaking to you a little bit, mm -hmm. but they really like you now. Can I ask you something? You can. Because I know you're not stupid. I'm not. <laughs> but he was pushing it a bit. Yeah. He was pushing it hella. His way to, like, take his hands away yeah. from you. I feel like, like yes. he's done his yeah. yeah, I don't want to be, like, a pawn in someone's game. I will say, at the beginning, my heart did hurt for Chrissy because I was like, damn, the girl actually has whiplash at this point. She's been trying, and at every point, she gets a pie in her face. <laughs> like, she does get blindsided by these guys a little bit because when they talk to her, they make it seem like they're so keen, but then two twos, they're putting their all into somebody else. Dylan did it with Sophie. Um, now, the Steph thing is a little bit weird. It's a little bit murky. But yeah, he was trying to like show interest, but then we haven't seen him pursue that since then. It happened with uh, Taylor. And then with Mercedes, they had a conversation about being genuine and stuff like that. And he Mercedes was like, I feel like you're the only genuine woman in here, but now you're pursuing M. Like, that doesn't really make sense, you know? So then Kayla and Chrissy end up talking to Mercedes about how disingenuous they feel like Taylor and M are being with this whole thing. I think that one could argue that this is making her look disingenuous as well because she's not coming to him with the concern of like, hey, I'm your friend. I'm trying to look out for your best interest. She wants to be coupled up with him. It's similar to what Sophie was doing. Sophie was saying, hey, look at your look at your match. Look at Chrissy. She's trying to explore things with Taylor. That's not a good look. You should just stick with me. It's kind of the same thing. Kind of. So I don't know. For Chrissy, I think that she did herself a disservice by being so laid back. And later in the episode, she does admit that. Um, she thinks that she should have pursued the guys more aggressively. And it's funny because one of the guys who she probably would have had the best luck with is Steph. And then it's Mimi who's talking to her and she's like, you have to be selfish. You have to just do what you gotta do. Mimi, I'd be careful because <laughs> her only option right now would be your man. I don't know. I don't know if you want her to go there, but it's true, it's Love Island. You can't let the days go by without making your intentions known to whoever you're interested in. You gotta let them know, hey, I like you. Let's talk, let's see if something can happen because you blink and you're gone. The next day, some things happen in the morning, quite irrelevant if you ask me. So I'm just gonna skip to the uh, guys and girls day. The guys get sent out to have like a day at the beach. The girls get their pampering session. It was actually cool to see them do the pampering in the episode because we hear that I think every three weeks or something like that in Love Island, they do send in a pamper team, but we never get to see it. So this was cute. During this day, Sophie says that she's starting to have um, questions about Dylan because he's pulling back from her. I just think that Dylan's gone really quiet all of a sudden. Maybe I'm reading into it. Maybe he's just feeling tired, overwhelmed. Time. You know, I ask him, how are you going? And he, re he responds with good. He opens up to me like a lot. And now it's almost like he's closing off again. This behavior is not new. He's done it twice before. He's great in the beginning. He's full force in the beginning. And after Dylan gets comfortable, he just stops trying. Now this time might be unique because they pan over to Dylan at the guys day and he says he has suspicions that Sophie might still be into Zayn. And the evidence of that is whenever he's coupled up with somebody in the bed, Sophie seems to have some kind of adverse reaction to it. Like she's 
yeah, I, for, I forget exactly what he said, but he thinks that her reaction is an indication that she is still into him. They later have a conversation and she assures him there is nothing going on with me and Zayn. I don't know. Did we see them have a conversation of like ending things completely romantically? And she's been in his life for the last two years. I'm sure sometimes it's like, oh yeah, no, I'm not interested. But then maybe a few months down the line, it's like, oh, well, I'm interested again. Okay, no, I'm not interested. Oh, maybe again. Like, it's possible. It's possible. But anyways, she says that um, that's the reason why he has been pulling back. And so now that she's assured him that she doesn't have feelings for Zane, he should be full on with her again. I hope so. I hope so. I don't think he will. Just looking at Dylan's track record, he tends to get a little lazy after a few days. So earlier in the day, Dylan had a conversation with some of the guys. I think it was... Nico, Zane, and Taylor. I think those were the guys in the conversation. And he said that Kayla and Chrissy spoke to Mercedes about um, the whole M Taylor situation and that Taylor is pawning M off to Mercedes so that he can pursue Hannah. And so there's some like disingenuous behavior going on, right? This annoys Zane because he's now starting to have doubts about Kayla, but it definitely annoys, um, what's his name now? Taylor. He goes and he has a conversation with Chrissy that just annoyed the living hell out of me because he says to her, um, you're like pushing me away. And I don't know why you're why you're doing that, you know? If I was gonna kiss somebody yesterday in the challenge, it was gonna be you. Like he does this thing and it's so irritating. Actions have consequences, Taylor. And you have done things to make the women not wanna pursue you full force. Like you're not clear on your intentions. You're very wishy-washy. And because you're slick and subtle with it, it's hard to pick up on, but they have picked up on it. But he wants to shift the blame onto the women. Like, well, I'm... I'm trying my best, but you're pushing me away. You're making it hard for me. Oh, I cannot stand him. I cannot stand people like that. I really cannot. But either way, he ends up talking to the guys. He says that he wants to put all his energy into Hannah. So when they return, he shows the whole villa. This is the girl that I'm pursuing now. Oh my God. Come with me? Yeah, I want to come with you. How are you? Oh, it was so hot. I feel like I've always felt something there for you in some way. And I think it was always like friendly, like obviously because you're my mate's girl. I really like you, so I'm looking forward to exploring that with nothing holding me back. Yay! Oh, things are just falling into place. Hannah is over the moon, as you would suspect. And I'm thinking to myself, Hannah, I hope you don't think that you're the special one. Let me explain. I feel like a lot of people think that they are the ones who can change somebody. They are the ones who um, is gonna bring out the best in said person who has a bad track record. You very well could be. But history has shown that Taylor can be a little slimy, a little bit, a little bit slick, a little bit slimy. And the issues that she had with Nico, in my opinion, pale in comparison to the the issues she could have with Nico. So you're here excited that Taylor is now claiming you publicly. Um, I feel like he will also embarrass you worse than Nico did. That's what I think. But hey, we don't even get to see where that goes because of how it ended. <laughs> Um, yeah, girl, I'd be careful. I'd be careful dealing with Taylor. We're gonna fast forward to the evening. The Islanders are called to the fire pit. And since Mia is a bombshell, she has to cuddle up with someone. She obviously picks Nico. It is to be noted that the night prior, she ordered Nico to sleep on the couch because she was not comfortable with him sleeping next to Hannah. Now, I understand that. I get it. But because they are so new and these two are already so possessive over each other, this is going to end in a trade wreck. I hope that it doesn't. It could be the best love story known to man. But if it is not the best love story known to man, it is going to be a mess. How are these two so... Mm, this is too fast. This is... Mm, well, hey, it's not me. It's not me. And they say love island moves fast, so fine. Fine. 
So because Nico is now partnered up with Mia, Hannah is single. Now, I did not expect Hannah to be immediately booted out of the villa. Sorry, baby, okay? Oh, that's messed. It sucks it was too late. <laughs> He's the eyes of the eyes I manifested. He's like everything I manifested. I finally felt excited and happy again. I did too. It's fun to share. When I tell you I was gobsmacked, like m my jaw literally dropped. And rarely does Love Island really shock me because oftentimes things are predictable, but this season of Australia is so unpredictable. You're dumping Hannah? Especially when Chrissy is right there. And even Chrissy says it too, like, I don't even have a person. Like, I should be going, not Hannah. Like, ah! Oh my gosh. Hannah says that she feels like she found her person in here and she's sad that she won't get to wake up next to Taylor, da da da, all this stuff, right? Does Taylor see you as his person? Because he didn't even entertain the idea of leaving with her. Mind you, there's nobody in the villa currently for him. Unless he has secret eyes for somebody, there's nobody in the villa right now that he would pursue. And he didn't even entertain the idea of leaving as well. To me, that's interesting. She said, I feel like I found my person. Okay, I could, I could rock with that. When she's out of the villa, she literally said, I found love in here. Girl, you better be talking about one of the girls. I hope production went and chopped and screwed that statement because you must not be talking about Taylor. Love, Taylor. Hannah, okay. So Chrissy gets emotional again because she feels like at this point it should have been her leaving. Girl, I hear it. At this point, I do think Steph is her best bet, like I said earlier. Um, Mimi already told her to be selfish, so hey, well, well. Miss Love Island, you could be selfish if you want to. Do I want her to be with Steph? No, I still think Steph is an F boy. He's just playing it very well this time around. Um, I was intrigued by her and Nico, but that's literally dead. I don't think Nico is going to try to jeopardize anything with Mia at this point. So potentially Mercedes could have been somebody who is still available, but he has a conversation with M and he's like, I really wanted it to be a recoupling. So I can be coupled up with you. I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna wear all white. I'm gonna have a nice speech. Oh, gonna... Hopefully tomorrow. Hopefully, fingers crossed. It was just like talking to my best friend. Every chat, M and I get closer and closer. So I said before, I don't really see it for them. I think I see it now. I think I do. And by me saying I don't see it for them, it's not to say that they don't have potential. It's just that I don't really get the feels, you know? But when he said talking to M is like talking to my best friend, oh, I got the feels. I said, oh my God, this is so cute. <laughs> it was so cute. I loved it. Yeah, I see it for them now. I do. And speaking of feels, Zane is no longer feeling the feels for Kayla. I don't feel a spark between Kayla and I. Really? But I just don't know if it's meant for me. Really? She loves the gym. She's funny. She's beautiful. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know what it is. I think maybe just, maybe just like sleep on it, bro. Now, I personally think Zane's change of heart is due to the fact that he's offended on his friend's behalf. That's what I think. But let's say that that's not it. Um, I think Zane is learning that there's more to a connection than just lifestyle. So he was focused on, oh, the gym, and we like the same movies. Oh my gosh, this is great. Okay, but then what? I still don't think Xanthi would have been um, the best option for him. But at least with Xanthi, she was so attentive to him. Like he noticed things that she would do that people hadn't done for him before. He's like, she actually listens and she pays attention. And we have this connection that is unique. And I think he's realizing, yeah, 
maybe Kayla and I do work on paper, but that synergy, that like affection and care is not there the way that it was with him and Sandy, which is real. Dylan asks him if he's afraid of like committing. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> like, Based on the things we know about Zayn, commitment is something that he's afraid. He said it himself. He said after his first relationship, that heartbreak was so hard for him that he didn't want to experience that again. So that's why he's been single for the last seven years. He doesn't want to experience that again. Maybe Kayla really is somebody who he can see potential with, that that fear is keeping him from wanting to go there, or he's realizing that their connection needs to be deeper than just filling out certain boxes. Oh, you do this, I do it too. You like this, I like it too. Relationships require more than just that. We will see. We will see. Maybe we'll get a, a Zane confessional where he really breaks it down. I doubt it. The man thinks talking is exhausting. But um, maybe we'll see some kind of breakdown from Zayn just giving us more insight on how he came to this decision. At the end of the episode... They tell us that there's going to be a twist that we have never seen. And apparently it's, was it Hotel um, Amore? Where are my notes? Oh, right here. Wait, I didn't write it down. I think it's called Hotel Amor. They leave the villa? Everybody? Everybody leaves the villa to Hotel Amor? What does this mean? What does it mean? I feel like Miley Cyrus right now. What does it mean? I'm so intrigued. Oh, this season is so great. Anyways, as always, please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.